What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here giving you part 9 of our React Native Redux tutorial where I have been showing you how to build this Kappa Keys application from scratch all the way to finish. In the last video we managed to build this Keys Buttons component and we used Redux to connect it to the application state and everything so that was really cool. What we're going to do in this video is build the Kappa Buttons component where we we make all these buttons and also link that up to the application state where we'll have a selected capo, etc. So let's dive into Visual Studio to get started there. Right, so here we are in Visual Studio. Here's our keys buttons component that we built. And the capo buttons component that we're going to build is going to be very similar. So think about the different things we did here. We had our styles here and we had our map state to props, uh, connect and all that. And then... Yeah, everything's going to be very similar here, so bear that in mind when we build this one. That's why I'm going to rush through this one a bit, because I want to keep this down to one video. So let's head over to our Kappa Buttons component. And currently, as you can see, it is empty. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is do the default boilerplate of importing React and component from React. We're also going to be using the just typical view from React Native. If you can remember from React Native Elements, we got the text and the button group. So that is from React Native Elements. Sorry, got to type this right. And yeah, ESLint is freaking out because we're not using anything yet, but we also need to import connect from React Redux. And then we'll import some other stuff as well, but let's go down to building our capo buttons component as we need to. Now, as usual, we need to do our render method. And the render method always has a return in it. For now, I'm just going to make it an empty view. And then we need to export default and remember, now we're going to use the connect to connect it to application state and we connect capo buttons. So remember, we have two things that are going here. We have our actions as the second parameter and we also have the map state to props. So let's put our map state to props here to get the state of our application. And we need to create that function over here map state to props. And that is going to take the selected values reducer. Remember we have that down there in our reducers, the selections reducer. Um, well in here we have selected values. So let's head back here. This is going to just return our selected values as props. So now we can look at the selected values. In this case we don't need to, if you remember from the keys buttons, we got the keys and the selected values. In this case, we don't need the keys because we are working with numbers and we, we just we don't need that whole keys list for this component. Uh, so we just need that and that's all sorted. Another thing is we created our actions. If you can remember, we had select capo as an action. That is over here in actions, key actions. We had select capo. Now, if we head back to our capo buttons, we need to remember to import this um, select capo from our actions. I know I'm rushing through this, but a lot of what I'm doing now is just a copy of what we were doing in keys buttons with different values and variables. So there we actually have it. Our whole application is connected to the application state. So it's not that complicated if you think about it. So I've just connected it to the state and connected it to the actions that exist. Now we need to actually build our component. So first of all, before I start building, I want to set, um, well, I want to get the um, the selected capo. So you get that from this dot props dot selected values dot selected capo. But I want to destructure it, so I'm going to say const selected capo, and I want to get that from this dot props dot selected values. There we go, we have our selected capper. Uh, we're also going to need to... A lot of the styles actually are the same for keys, buttons, and, and this. So I can just copy the styles here. They're actually all the same. The button styles and container styles and everything. 
And that makes me think, if we're going to have these both the same, then shouldn't we reuse this? So let's head over to constants over here. And if we think about it, we could just make a another thing to export. We can export the const button group styles. And in here we can stick the styles, but without the const there, and without that, and we just simplify it. Now we have a reusable set of button group styles, which is really cool. Oh, and we need to get the screen width. So in this case, the screen width we could actually export as well on its own. Uh, export const screen width. So whenever we use it again, we can, if you remember from where we've previously used it, we used dimensions. Dot get window dot width. That's how we got the screen width, but the thing is we also need to get dimensions from React Native. So we import dimensions from React Native. Now if you think about it, maybe later on we'd want to use the screen height as well. So let's just get the... I need to spell dimensions, right? That's terrible of me. Let's also put in a variable screen height, just in case we're going to use that later. I don't even know if we will use it later. It's just nice to know that we can get it all from constants and not have to worry about it ever again. Now we have this working here. So if we head back to, let's actually implement this into our normal keys buttons first. So if we head back to our keys buttons, we don't need these styles at all anymore. We could actually just get away with um, importing the buttons button group styles so we import button group sorry i need to spell this right again group styles and we get that from one directory up constants i know i'm moving really fast but i mean this is a lot of stuff we've dealt with before so now we don't need the screen width anymore because we've already figured that out and that means we don't need dimensions anymore either so that is all sorted and now we're not going to get this from styles instead we're going to get the same stuff from button group styles so if you can see that was actually pretty easy now our whole application is working because we've got this button group styles from there and we're reusing components which is always great because you're supposed to implement dry don't repeat yourself or just drive for short and what you need to do next is we can actually straight up copy this into our kappa buttons area as well and get it here so now we have the styles just as we wanted we do need to remember to import the button group styles so button group styles from one directory up constants and there we have it so this should all be fine. It's only freaking out here because we haven't used this. All of these red lines are just because we haven't used this. We don't need these styles anymore, which is awesome. And here we are on our Kappa button. The last thing we need to do now is actually build our component. So as usual, the style here that we're going to implement for this view is going to be the same as the style that we had in the previous one. We had justify content to be center. And then we're going to align items to be center so that just makes sure everything's centered everywhere which is great this doesn't need to be a closing tag anymore because we're going to close the view here and inside the view we'll implement a text h3 which is going to say capo the last one said key this one is looking at the capo and then in here we can already get our selected capo so we have this text h1 if you remember we had the style here that we said margin bottom two we could i mean put that into its own thing because we were using that margin bottom two but it's only one thing that we're changing if it was multiple styles then i'd put it into its own little object but for now if it's just one property to change it's not a big deal so now we want to put this selected capo in here so you copy that and then just put selected capo so now selected capo is getting used and it will always display the selected capo over here which is perfect and then finally the big thing we have the button group so let me start with putting in the easy stuff if we think about it, we had the container style and the container style is equal to container style because we already got that from there and same for button style 
pretty straightforward. Just have button style. And then again for the selected text style. And that is equal to selected text style. It's nice to have everything standard and quick to develop there. Finally, we need to have the other three components. We're going to have on press and we're going to have the selected index and the buttons. So I think first of all, I want to say, what are we going to make the buttons? And I'm going to make the buttons equal to capo positions, which I still need to create. But if you think about it, this is pretty straightforward. What are the buttons there? the input's going to be, it's just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up into 11. So I'm going to make my own little variable up here, just for this component, called kappa positions. And it's going to equal just that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. I know this is pretty tedious, but it's just, you know, you only do it once, so it's not even worth copying pasting because it's pretty easy. And this probably gives you some time to think about why we're doing what we're doing. Finally, 11. So there we have our cap positions. So for each button, there's going to be a button 1, a button 2, button 3, all the way up until 11, which is going to be the same amount for our other stuff. If you look at our application, here it is. We have the buttons all the way 1 up until 11. So that's what that does. Now we need to manage the on press and actually set the selected index. So in this case, we had the selected index there all set. And here we have it set as well. We need to make sure it manages the on presses for our actual application. So in order to do that, we need to say the on press. Well, let's first select set the selected index. So the selected index is the selected capo. So remember we have a capo that's going to be, you know, either one or two or three all the way up until 11. Now, if we have a selected capo, we've already got the selected capo, by the way, so that's fine. The selected index needs to be the selected capo minus one because the selected capo one is actually index zero and the selected capo two is index one, selected capo three is, well, you get the point, right? So if you look at it this way, sorry we need to say well that is index zero that is index one that is two that is three see that's how that works so bear that in mind that's why we're saying selected capo is minus one now finally we have to do the on press and the on press will accept an index as a payload and then it will simply call that action this dot props dot select capo and then it will put in the payload of index and in this case we're going to have the index if the index is zero we want to actually put the selected capo or select capo to the payload to be index plus one. So that's how this plus one minus one works. You always have to figure out your indexes in arrays. Uh, that's just something worth keeping in mind. And I mean, we could work out everything with the indexes on their own, but it makes more sense to just stick to understanding the business logic behind things. Make one equal one instead of one equal zero and stuff like that. So all that said, this should actually now work. So let's dive into our application and see if it is working just to make sure everything's up and running and then we can end off this video. Okay guys, while I was testing, I realized I ran into a problem. I needed to call this in constants button group styles. Classic me always forgetting the S at the end of styles. Anyway, let's go check if this actually works now. <laughs> Funny enough, I've got it working, but I realized I also forgot to add this to the, well, I forgot to add my tapper buttons component to the actual app. So let's go make sure that we do that. So it's in the main screen and we just need to go down here and add capper buttons should be fine. And then we also need to import capper buttons so we can import Kappa buttons from one root up into components into Kappa buttons. And there we go. Now, hopefully, our application should work. So let's go check it out. Okay, I'm on a string of errors here because now I've messed up another thing. I misspelled um, margin bottom in my Kappa buttons. So we go down there, margin button. Let's see, I said like a half bottom, half button. It's B-O-T-T-O-M. So there we go. That should fix that. Finally, I think we're ready to actually test this working application.
So here we have our application. Let me know in the comments below if you thought it was hilarious that I keep messing up everywhere. Trust me, that's like me on a daily basis. Uh, so we can see our first application keys are all working, changing values there. And in the capo, I can change values too, which is really cool. Now, obviously these two components kind of work independently on each other. They don't, like their values don't depend on one another. Uh, that's where the next few videos we're going to be working on showing you how you can use those two different values to build up a new logic for the third component that we need to make. But in the next video, we're going to clean up things a bit and spread these out with dividers and just scaffold the project a bit better so everything's a lot more organized so that when we add our last component, things would be a lot better. Uh, we'll actually add the last component. We well, we'll, we'll avoid uh, adding all the logic because I think that's a video on its own. Anyway, guys, as usual, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, leave some comments, and be sure to subscribe if you have not done that yet. I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.